Darren Aronofsky is the Wunderkind who directed Pi, one of my favourite ever Jewish horror films about advanced number theory. He also made Requiem for a Dream, possibly the most wrist-slittingly depressing, yet still brilliant, film ever made. His passion project for the last several years has been The Fountain, and we took a look at it the other day. I have an awesome Entertainment Tonight style segue for you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Currently, I know I look a bit strange because uh, when we shot the Fear and Loathing opening for tonight's episode, mm. I got a bit sunburnt and now I'm, you know, peeling. You know who else is appealing? Rachel Vice in The Fountain. <laughs> I spent hours on that. I thought you'd no, like I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you spent hours. Oh, God. This is going to be a good episode. I actually didn't watch the film. I just sat there thinking of a good intro yeah, as well. for the review. But what about the film? What about the film? I'm going to go first, am I? Yeah, sure. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Really? Yes. I predict nobody's going to love it. It is such a non-crowd pleaser. I think you're absolutely right. I think a lot of people are going to hate it. They're going to think it's really pretentious, mm. arty rubbish. I yeah. think a lot of people, are gonna, a lot of critics, I think, are going to say yeah. that too. Yeah. Exactly. It's um. Yeah. I think it's right. And uh, I think I've heard um, Aronofsky say that it really has divided audiences mm. um, to either love it or hate it. And I think a lot of people are going to hate it. It's a fantasy melodrama, and he's shooting for two thousand and one. Not sure if he quite gets that far because I don't think anyone aside from 2001 can get that far, but well, that's what he's going for. Yeah, oh, it's going to take multiple viewings, I think, yeah. for me to really get it. But um, yeah, it's it's really out of the blue. I really liked it too. Yeah. yeah, it's not sort of one of the best films I've seen, but it's uh, it really. I don't want to get really too wanky here, but mm. even though it's the sixth episode, yeah. and you know, I think that's long gone. That ship has sailed. Yeah. Um, it's really a personal film, I think. It really seems like a really personal film to mm. him. And my little tagline for the film, I think, is I think it's a love poem about death. Absolutely. It's, um, it's yeah, it's a poem to Rachel Weisz, for starters. Mm. It's an absolute love letter to her. But it's really quite, yeah, emotional and, and it's quite heavy going. And it's only 90-something minutes. That's the other big thing. Yeah, that I uh, have. 96, I think. That's yeah. just bizarre. And I've got something to surprise you. Yeah. The film was originally going to shoot in Australia... As you know, yep. a little while ago. Yeah. Um, how long ago? Uh, two thousand. a few years. Yes, yeah. two thousand and two-ish, I think. And it was going to be shot in Queensland with yep. Kate Blanchett and Brad Pitt. Yep. My surprise is, I think I I've know got people in the know. There it is, an authentic uh, two thousand and two, the fountain created uh, foam latex uh, rock, and this was going to be used by the Mayans. It was throwing down in that scene where the the three warriors, Jack oh, included, right. yeah, yeah. and they were right throwing the spears instead. So oh, okay. they turfed the rocks because uh, clearly somebody had stolen them all. I'm not sure who, but there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, going to be cool. up on eBay very, very soon. Uh, yeah, we should make it a co uh, prize for a competition. Fuck that. I'm keeping it. <laughs> you win. <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> I want to go back to the casting. The um, Jackman, yeah, I just thought was outstanding. He's and, great, yeah. yeah. This, he can't do anything wrong at the moment, I don't think. There's nothing he can't do, mm. I don't think. And, and he Vice, proves it by doing all three, you know, three completely different things exactly, in one film. Yeah, yeah, damn straight. But it's, um, I think, yeah, Vice is probably, uh, this is a bit sacrilegious, probably would just be just as good as Blanchett. I mean, she really isn't in it that much. It's more about Jackman sort of stewing and often a little bubble. Um, but she, I mean, in, in a sense, she has a bit of a harder role to do because she, the whole film is... Uh, spurred on by her you know she's got to make us believe that we would also go to the ends of the earth for her and i think she totally sells it and she plays a real character not this unattainable beauty who smiles every now and then. you know she is a real character and you know you, you do feel for her instantly i would love to recommend this film but so many people are going to hate it and not just the mass market you know the mass audience it's going to be hated by the art house crowd it's going to be divided halfway you know down the middle because it is a melodrama and the point of most of it is that it is laid on really thick mm. and it's supposed to be really obvious dialogue none of that is it's not bad writing because I mean it's it's Aronofsky we know he writes well mm. it's a very very measured and very specific dialogue but I think people are gonna misunderstand it I think the art house crowd is going to crack the shits of this film because of its length as well to go back to that I think they're going to say this is it's 90 minutes you know art house films are not 90 minutes excuse me no art house films are two and a half hours and this is clearly it wants to be an art house film but that, that, that feels cut. like you're talking about the ultra you know the ultra art house crowd yeah they know who they are <laughs>
Yes. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yes. The people who love it will love it because it really comes from the heart. It's not, it's not clinical. It's not removed as a lot of these uh, solemn meditations on the nature of humans are. Ah, it, it's actually, you know, it's got a real heart to it. And I think the people who connect with it are going to connect with it on that level. And that's all the week we have for you this time. Join us next week when we'll not only save you money at the movies, we'll show you how to walk away with a profit. We speak to AFI award-winning director Sarah Watt about stuff. And we review the gaddafi rific Last King of Scotland. And just a reminder that each episode of The Bazura Project can be viewed online at our website, www.bazuraproject.com. Each online episode contains all the fun you saw tonight, minus the profanity that Channel 31 insists we include. So, until next fuck. So, <laughs>